Hi everyone, this is Paul Schmutzler, and I'm continuing in my series of looking at a few alternative NLEs from the perspective of a longtime Premiere Pro editor. Today I'm going to be showing you HitFilm Pro, which is a relative newcomer to the scene of nonlinear editing software. And the way I best sum up HitFilm Pro is by saying, if Adobe made this, it would be called Premiere Effects, because they've really done a pretty good job at mashing up a good NLE with a very good compositing application. So it's like taking Premiere Pro and After Effects and making them all inside of one application. So let's jump right in. First, let me introduce you to the general layout of the application. At the very top, you can see there are four buttons, Home, Project, Edit, and Export. So that's kind of your workflow as you open the application, what you'll see first and where you'd go from there. You can see the home screen is different from most applications. It's flooded with all these links to their YouTube tutorials on their channel and even some of their tweets here. So if you just scroll through what you see immediately on their YouTube channel, you can kind of get a feel for the audience that they're going for. It's lots of wild, flashy effect. It's meant to be an application that people can use to make Hollywood or film style effects in their videos. I get the sense that a lot of their audience is short film or low budget filmmakers, uh, people on YouTube that just wanna make something crazy or fun. That's not to say that it's all it's for, but that does seem to be an audience that they're trying to appeal to by showing off all the cool stuff you can do, like the Iron Man boots here on the right, which is actually a pretty cool tutorial I watched. So on the left-hand side of your screen, you can see there's new, open, and then recent projects available right away. And that project that's showing there is my test file we'll be working on today. The next tab over is Project, which is what it'll take you to if you hit the New button on the left of the home screen. And here's where you would set your project parameters. It does support up to 4K resolutions, so you're not gonna be limited in the types of projects you can work on in here. After you've set your parameters and applied them, it'll then take you to the edit screen. So my project is already open, and this is the basic editing layout. It does have several workspaces, which you can access under the view menu here, which will automatically change the layout of all the panels here. You can break off panels in HitFilm Pro, which I really like just by right-clicking on a project and telling it to float the container, you can then move it around or moving, move it even onto a second screen. But for my project for now, I'm just gonna put it back to the normal workspace for editing. So this is the default editing workspace with Windows where they would normally be. So on the left, we have your media bins. Below that, there are effects, your timeline at the bottom, and then basically your source and timeline viewers at the top. They call the source viewer the trimmer, and the timeline viewer is just the viewer. You'll also notice there's this layer tab here, which is unique to HitFilm Pro, but that will really come into play when we start looking at the compositing features. The editing process is really nothing surprising. You've got video and audio tracks. Everything works fairly standard as far as how to put clips in, but there are a few issues that I had to contend with as a Premiere Pro editor. One is the difference in shortcuts. For inserting and overlaying a clip, you're probably used to period and comma, but in HitFilm, it's N and B. They are right next to each other on the keyboard, so at least you don't have to jump around looking for which is which. But that was something that threw me off at first. The other thing that threw me off was the fact that keyboard shortcuts do not work globally, at least as far as dropping clips onto your timeline is concerned. So when I set my playhead to where I want a clip to go in, and then I hit N, you can see nothing happens. Well, you can't see, but I did hit N and nothing happened. If I want to drop this clip in, I have to choose the trimmer viewer and, and uh, illuminate it in blue here by clicking on it and then hit the insert button. The other thing you'll notice is it just overwrote everything on my timeline there, which is what I wanted it to do because I used the overlay command. Because even if I use insert, it still puts it on track one and it moves everything down. So how do you put it on track two? Well, you can't with the keyboard shortcuts. You have to drag it onto the track that you want. The other thing that drove me crazy was the fact that in and out points on your timeline are not honored like they normally are in NLEs. Normally, if I put an in and out point like that in this lighter gray shaded area, and then I had no in and out points here, or even if I did, I would, it would ask me, what do you want to do? Do you want to use these in and out points on the viewer or the trimmer, or do you want to use the in and out points on your timeline, or do you want to fit to fill or stretch it or whatever the case is? Instead, Wherever you put your in and out points and then place your playhead on the timeline, it puts the clip where your playhead starts. So if I insert here or overlay here, 
it puts it right where the playhead is and ignores the in and out points. Hit Film explained to me that the in and out points on the timeline are only used to determine your export. So at this point, I would use this button for exporting the in and out area, and it would only export from here to here on, on the timeline, leaving everything else unrendered in the final file. So that was something that's just different in this NLE. It's very non-traditional and drove me crazy, but once I understood, at least I knew how to work around it. So again, placing clips and audio on the timeline, there's really nothing much to it beyond what I've just shown you here. It works the same way with a few little idiosyncrasies. Now let's look at what HitFilm was really known for, which is all of its compositing and effects. I did something pretty basic at first, which was I added a rain effect to this clip down here. You can see that there is water falling down on these rocks and it's actually from a waterfall, not rain. But I decided to spice it up a bit by adding some actual rain. So under your effects, you can just type in here and you would see that it pops up the rain effect here. And I can add that as a separate video layer on top of this waterfall shot. And it's got an alpha channel built into it. So when I turn it on, you can see now it actually added streaks of rain falling down. And if I play it back, it won't play back very smoothly because it's a live effect, but it'll give you an idea what it looks like. So again, not much to it. It basically just added more streaks of rain than I can already see. And now if I double click on this, you can see how it opens it up basically in its own tab and allows you to change everything. And it allows you to see very clearly what exactly is going on. So from here, you can change anything you might want to as far as the direction, the spread, and the amount, which would be kind of like seed as far as how much rain is actually on screen. And then I actually added a blur effect because it was way too crisp to me. So I blurred it a little bit to make it a little more realistic. So moving back to the editor, if we go back a few clips, you'll see there's a shot of my daughter jumping. And if, he, if she had been facing the other way, I might have wanted to blur her face so that she wasn't recognizable. Uh, in my case, I did not need to do that, but I did it for fun anyway. There's a witness protection plugin built into the software. So if you go up to the controls here, this will affect whatever is uh, selected on your timeline. And under effects, I've added this witness protection. And you can see if I just turn it on, I've tracked it by hand. and allowed her to remain anonymous on this awesome video of her jumping. She'll probably be embarrassed by that in about five years anyway. So getting now into more advanced compositing, there's two shots I wanna show you. The first one I spent a lot of time on. This is a shot that I use in here of these two dogs bringing the ball back to us. Since HitFilm goes for the really far out Hollywood style over the top effects, I figured I'd go ahead and give this dog laser beam eyes. So I did that by just Finding some lasers, because of course there's animated lasers in HitFilm, and then I added those as effects to the clip that's right here. So if I scroll down, you'll see there are my two animated lasers. I'll go ahead and turn them on so you can see what they look like. They're the same color, because I figure he doesn't have two different color eyes. And then I manually tracked them to follow his eyes through this clip. So let me show you that now. So they actually grow, or kind of emanate from his eyes as he starts moving. You can see that I manually tracked these because it kind of bounces around a little bit. It's not perfect. But after I did that, I decided, you know, that's nice, but let's do something else. So I wanted to add one other crazy lighting effect. So I'm gonna turn off the lasers for now to make it easier to see. And I wanted to add this light flare. So the light flare is like a supernova coming straight out of the dog's eye. And I wanted that to not have to be animated all over again because I had already done two lasers for a couple hundred frames. And I was like, all right, I gotta figure out a better way to do this. Fortunately, there are trackers inside of HitFilm. So I basically just added a tracker and then used the tracking panel to choose my points. Now let me move this panel over so you can see the image better. And I'll zoom in. All right, so you can see I, I chose to go with double points here because I wasn't sure how well it would be able to track just one of the eyes. So I put it around both eyes, and then I chose the optical flow method, which allows it to look at a number of parameters, including lighting changes and slight changes in, in the shape. So the dog's head does turn slightly in the clip. Not much, he mostly points at me, but he does turn a little bit and the perspective changes. Plus if focus changes, that can also affect whether trackers will follow it or not. 
But as you can see, it did a fantastic job. I mean, it just followed them perfectly from the very first frame, even though it's a little soft, and it stayed with them. And then I chose Transform because there are two options. You can either stabilize a clip or Transform. Transform will allow you to apply the tracker to an object and then have it make that object move with the tracker. Then what I did was I right-clicked in this menu and added a new point. And then I chose that new point as the layer for it to apply to. Um, I did not need rotation or scale really for this effect because of the nature of the motion of this clip. I probably could have used scale as the dog gets closer to make that supernova grow a little bit, but it's so subtle I didn't really worry about it and didn't feel like it made much of a difference. So then you would apply this to that new point. And now you can see if I drill down into this new point, boom, there's all those tracking points keyframed along the position as the dog moves through the clip. And then finally, going back to the light flare, turning it on, and then choosing a preset of what you want it to look like, and then choosing under the motion, the position, you would choose it to follow that new point. So this is like parenting in After Effects. And then if you look into the viewer, that little supernova there follows his eye perfectly smoothly. So if I go back to my editor now, and go back to that clip, you can see he has the supernova, but also he has the laser beams, and he can have laser beam eyes plus a supernova coming out of his forehead. And the last thing that I typically do in this project is I add some color because you can, as you can see, the grade from the camera is very dull, it's very flat. So you should definitely add some color back in, some contrast. So I used a number of effects, again, just available within Hit Films effects, including on this one clip, the witness protection. But then on most clips, I just chose a look that looked good by using a combination of these. And then I was able to copy the effect by right-clicking on the clip hitting copy, which this sounds a little counterintuitive, but you copy the clip and then you go to another clip, right click, and you want to paste attributes. So when you copy, it copies the clip and the attributes, but then when you paste, you can choose whether to paste the clip itself or just the attributes. So this would copy all the effects from one to the other. So I was able to just apply the grade I wanted to the first clip, select everything after it, except for this rain here, and then I was able to paste the attributes on top of that to get the grade across all the clips at once. So it made it very quick and easy. And then there's one more troublesome clip that I always deal with, which is this one here, because the camera was wobbling around on a, a platform high above this waterfall. And this is where I used the tracker to stabilize. So my tracker here was put on two points again. I chose two points on rocks that really don't move around at all, and there's not a lot of water flowing over them to move to trick the tracker into following it off the edge here. And it did a great job, again, of following it. You don't see much of a movement here because of the fact that it doesn't move like an animal, the animal did in the other shot. So if I zoom in, you can see there's just a tight cluster of motion frames where it moves around a little bit. And again, going to the viewer, You can see it does a tremendous job of keeping that, um, keeping that clip much more stable than it was originally. I did add one more effect that I wanna show you on this rain clip here. So let me turn this off and I'll open this up in controls. You can see there's a rain on glass effect, which is really neat and a lot of fun to play with. Although the one thing that bugged me about it was you can see the drops of rain here that it simulates that might be on the lens or on the uh, glass that you might be looking through. The thing that bugs me about it is the fact that there's no blur built into this. You would, you would think that if your focal point is back here on these rocks, the rain that's on the glass or the lens can't be in, in focus as well. So I wish they had had a blur built right into this. Overall, it does a pretty convincing job. And of course, your final step is getting your video out into the world. So you would go to the Export tab and you can see all your presets here on the right. If you don't find something you like here, you actually have to make your own preset. You can't just choose a preset and then customize it. So if you do that, you'll find all the parameters that you would typically need, including be able to, being able to adjust your bit rate, 
and the number of passes that it takes. So to export your project, you would go back to your editing tab, and then you go down here to the bottom left and choose to either export the contents, which would be your entire timeline, or just export the in and out points, which again, would only export this lighter gray area here. But I want the whole timeline, so I'll choose export contents. You would choose your destination, of course, wherever you want the file to go, name it, choose your preset here, which I'll go with YouTube 1080p, and then start your export by clicking start. So that's a look at HitFilm Pro, which is another alternative that you can use over Premiere Pro. There is a free version available, which is limited in its capabilities, but HitFilm Pro gives you pretty much everything you're gonna need for a day-to-day nonlinear editor.